Welcome to the String Jay Show. I am Ryan. Today we are doing another builder profile. And today we're looking at Grez Guitars out of Northern California. Just got done with my interview with Barry Gresbach, or Barry Grez is what I call him, uh, and I let that slip in the interview, so now he knows that I call him Barry Grez for short. Uh, it's fun, it's out there. And uh, I'm editing right now, and I'm super stoked about this one, uh, because I, Barry's a personal friend of mine, and I find him to be brilliant, a brilliant guitar maker, a brilliant businessman, and Every time I leave a conversation with him, I feel more inspired and smarter. So I am excited to share this with all of you. These guitars are made out of reclaimed redwood. Barry's carbon footprint has gotta be zero. This is hundreds of years old redwood that he goes out and hunts for and reclaims and makes beautiful, beautiful instruments. I'm gonna stop talking now and let Barry do the rest. So we have Barry Grez here, Barry Gresbach here from uh, Grez Guitars, and I am quite familiar with Grez Guitars. I own a Mendocino. I believe I have, I did a whole series on on the Mendocino guitar line, which is very exciting. Um, the bass, which I've been drooling over and saving some money for, um, I'm excited about too. You came out of the corporate world yep. and, and worked your way into making uh, really exquisite guitars. How did that happen and when did it happen? Uh, probably about 13 years ago now, I started building guitars and, um, well, you know, a guitar, that's kind of where it starts. And, uh, uh, at that point I still had, uh, I was working for myself. I had long since quit my corporate job. I've kind of been self-employed for a long time, but, um, I was, and still do a little work as a, an acoustical consultant and sound designer. So, uh, churches and performing arts centers and and transit stations uh things like that um although these days it's really more about guitars so if you're doing sound design if you're doing consulting sound design you're building guitars where did your knowledge about the physics of sound come from from i don't know 30 years of working in sound um so I started out as an electronics designer. So okay. uh, not in the guitar world though. I mean, I, as a teenager, I made guitar amps and pedals and whatever, but really as a job, I was working in the pro audio industry. So I was designing like, you know, 2000 watt power amplifiers and giant, uh, I don't know, line array sound systems for stadiums, things like that. You know, I used to teach mixing um, to live sound not live sound engineers. So all of that sort of stuff, right? If you know just tons and tons about electronics and audio and loudspeaker design, um, and then you apply that to a guitar, you're, you're kind of already halfway there is the way I see it, right? I mean, it's sound and, and vibration and, uh, and having that corporate background helps from a business standpoint too, right? I understand the counting and marketing and, you know, just organization and returning phone calls. And so I, I kind of came into this later in life, really fully mm -hmm. primed. In my head, when I think of Grez guitars, I picture the guitar, I picture a Mendocino, but then I also picture a massive redwood tree. Um, those are the two image that, images That's that come awesome. to mind. Because- That's done my job well. Yeah, because you make guitars out of reclaimed Redwood, how did you decide to do that? And what was the process of getting into that? Because, I mean, at that point, you not only, you're not only building guitars, but you are also hunting for materials. Yeah. This happened right around the time that I was learning to build guitars. I also started to realize how much old growth Redwood we had just laying around where I live. Um, I guess I was always aware of it and appreciated it, but I didn't fully understand that you could go get some, right? That it was out there for the taking, so to speak, right? That buildings are getting uh, taken down, bridges are getting taken down, and there's just this lumber. And I met a guy 
who um, had a whole bunch of redwood, just just a giant pile of this redwood. And he told me he got it from uh, a company that was doing demolition on an old train tunnel. And they were taking out these old redwood boards, you know, 125 year old boards from this tunnel and they were throwing them into the chipper. They were shredding them for mulch and then they were gonna sell it for, you know, redwood bark in your yard. Cause you know, 13 years ago, the whole idea of reclaimed wood wasn't quite as in the consciousness as it is now, right? So sure. he sees this and he says, you know, hold on, wait, wait guys. What if I just took this redwood from you? I mean, do you, do you care? And they're like, no, we don't, you know, the only reason we're mulching it is because we have to get rid of it somehow. If you want to take it, take it. So he took all this redwood and started selling it. And I don't know, I stumbled across him and uh, ended up buying a bunch of that wood and uh, building uh, a few guitars out of it, acoustic guitars. You know, so really it's just the top that's made from this old redwood. Mm -hmm. um, but that kind of just set me on this path of, oh, this wood exists when things come down. And then the wheels start turning of, okay, it's cool because it's reclaimed. It's cool because it's from where I am from, right? It, these trees were just cut down 20 miles away. They went into a tunnel 10 miles over there. And now they're back. Now they're in my shop 100 years later. Mm -hmm. um, but then the more I thought about it, the more I realized that there's these sort of, I don't want to say magical properties, but well, I'll say it, right? There's, yeah. there's something cool about these first growth trees and there's something cool about wood that's been seasoning for a hundred years right yeah. so it just kind of all came together i just had this sort of epiphany that this wood that i have that i can go find uh you know in my local community is amazing so this is a little 18 inch section wow. of a beam that i've chainsawed out of a you know 16 foot beam so this how about well, first of all you know i am not super strong right it's redwood this just doesn't weigh a whole lot yeah i was just so gonna ask that chainsaw, and there's there's basically three bodies hiding in here right so i'll get okay. three solid body three one piece body solid bodies out of this cool and then uh i just cut up some of these so i can grab a piece that has just been cut so this is kind of the beautiful, if I can get that on the camera, oh. wood that's hiding yeah. inside. I don't know how well that's gonna show. I love the streaks on redwood. This, like, yeah. they're just, they're so cool. And you can see some nails. So what I'll do is when I position this for the body, this will be the bottom of the instrument. So mm -hmm. sometimes when you look at these, if you flip them over, kind of where the jack goes, you might see some weird discoloration and whatnot. And, this is reclaimed wood. That's that's, awesome. you know, that's just part of the deal. Yeah. Right? So this then gets machined up and becomes, let's say this, double cutaway uh, Mendocino uh, Junior. Just, and you know, you can, you can see that we've got the pocket in the back, uh, but just a beautiful one piece body that weighs nothing. Yeah. And then you know, once there's finish on it, it looks like this. So this is ready to be built up. Finish is cured, kind of polished. Yeah. And uh, and you've seen one of these. I think I had sent one to you just as a demo, right? So you, you've kind yep, of seen Yep, I, de I demoed one. Yeah. It's one of, the best, one of the best juniors I ever played. Absolutely, awesome. hands down. Yeah, so, so that that's kind of the deal, right? In, in, like that giant piece of wood here came from a bridge, right? So this uh, was... Uh, on the bottom of the bridge, holding up the roadway, right? The road would have been on top. And that's why it's so big, right? You got trucks and cars going over it. Mm -hmm. um, and the, this particular bridge was built in, I think, 1925. Wow. And it lasted 90, I don't know, 94 years before they took it down and put up a steel bridge. And so so these beams, you know, I have enough of these beams to last me for a few years worth of juniors. Wow. It's just well, I'm always on the hunt for more because you can't just run out and go, huh, I, I need I need another giant beam from some old building. You know, you better have found it in advance. It's so weird. It's so weird to think about, like, playing a guitar that how many generations of cars have driven over? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's just a wild uh, like I think about a, a couple of guitars that um, none of years but i own a couple of guitars that are um you know they're okay but they they're the guitars that i'm kind of like man in like 20 years these guitars are going to be super super cool yeah um because of just how wood 
ages. And um, you're kind of like beating that process or beating the wait time. I feel you like know? I'm cheating. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, it's kind of like with like the, you know, like the world of relic guitars. Well, here's a hundred year old wood. Try to give me, you know, something a little bit. Right. Try to give me something on the inside. Yeah, <laughs> try, try, try to show me something a little bit more worn in than this. I don't think you're going to find it. And you have a really wide variety of models and some of them are not even on your website like and you started in the arch top world correct i built yes I, well i didn't start with arch tops i started with regular old steel string flat top acoustics but did pretty quickly end up building arch tops uh and i still do but you're right i don't promote it very much um because the regular line is just cooking and it's yeah to, to make well, sometimes. I, I mean, I, you know, I mean, the thing you run into with, um, with handmade arch top guitars is they're, ex they're expensive because I mean, like the amount of time and artistry yeah. that goes into building, uh, building one of those. So I imagine, you know, those are usually, are those usually somebody contacts you and says, you know, I'm looking for this type of guitar. Yes. Okay. They're completely custom for somebody. So we're deciding on, you know, is it a 16 inch body or a 17? What should the body depth be? You know, what should the woods be? What, just everything. Is it a two piece neck with a stripe down the middle? You know, or is it, you know, one piece? Is it mahogany for tone and weight purposes? Or is it maple? Cause it matches the body. Every little thing we kind of work out. Kind of the first group of people that kind of glommed on to, to Grez guitars were the blues guys. And you have, yep. you have a pretty stable footing in the, in the blues world, but um, I think it's really funny when I see someone like Alec from Mas Mask Audio right. with a with a baritone, a Mendocino baritone, you know, just playing the most punishing fuzz that there is. Um, and uh, I feel like, at least from my perspective, it seems like that it's starting to broaden out from the blues, the blues players now, and you're starting to see some more kind of mainstream stuff. Is that is that your experience or no? Definitely, yeah, and I think that's not an unusual way for these sort of things to start, right? You, your first sales are to people you know, and then the people they know, and eventually it becomes people you don't know buying them. Uh -huh. And that's kind of, you know, the, the progression from, you know, knowing a, a couple of cool blues guys and the people that they know, and then the people that those people know, to eventually just having regular people know about me. What is your musical your musical background you know like what is it that you hear in your head uh, because i find that that usually plays its way into guitars you know you look like you look at uh, a guitar brand like dunnable and you realize where sasha came from and why those guitars no. are the way they are How, uh, and you know with you with these arch tops and very i i keep on using the word exquisite to, to describe your guitars because they they very they very much are like like when i pick up my mendocino it's very carefully you know <laughs> like i mean it's just you know um well, i appreciate that because i do get them back sometimes from folks yeah. who haven't been careful you know <laughs> yeah. happen. um so i would i would assume kind of like a jazz blues americana kind of background for you but totally. tell me if i'm wrong yeah no i mean that's totally right i mean in reality i was a teenager in the 80s right so there was the hair metal period and the point of you... period yeah so so but i didn't although i was super into all of that as a teenager um that wasn't really what stuck i was somehow a little bit more interested in old country and yeah americana blues jazz was for for a long time and maybe still am kind of into you know western swing and jump blues which is very uh jazz influenced blues yeah, yeah. um but I, yeah, I don't want to overstate like, oh, I'm a blues guy. Yeah. Someone hangs off, hangs up the phone with you to yep. uh, order a, um, a guitar. What is the process and how long does something like that take? Well, uh, it depends on what it is. So if it's something like a Mendocino or any of the derivatives, the Mendocino bass or the junior or the baritone or what have you, um, those are usually, if they're not crazy, highly customized custom color maybe different binding uh eight weeks is eight. about the turn time wow it's super fast that is really fast that is unbelievable one of the things that i really really love about um about your guitars specifically uh, you know uh, earlier there i mentioned that you know i'm very careful when i pick up my mendocino yeah. because uh to me 
for the price, and and this is something that you thought long and hard about, um, you're getting quite a bit more guitar for the price. And, you know, like I I feel like the way those guitars are constructed, the materials that they're made out of, is not something that um, kind of your normal everyday person has the opportunity to stumble on, you know, or yeah. have, have the opportunity to acquire. And you were very intentional about making sure that this is, these are guitars that could be procured by a normal person like me. And I actually feel bad that about the prices that I have to charge. Like I would like them to be a little lower, but I, they, they can't be, but I, you know, I, I don't aspire to selling crazy expensive guitars, right? I, I kind of want to make instruments that real working musicians can buy. Partly because it's real working musicians who helped me start, right? Yeah. So like none of those, if I started making $5,000 guitars, none of those people who helped me get going early on could buy one or would buy one probably. So the, the trick though is that if I'm going to keep the prices sort of affordable, um, I have to sell kind of a lot of them. Yeah. Thus the eight week turn and you know, if we, there's, there's at any one moment, 10, 12 guitars in process in the shop and just, you know, one or two a week are shipping. Um, so it's maybe a little bit of a hustle, but it, you know, that's enough to be able to make a living at that price point. So, yeah, so I am trying to keep the prices low purposefully. You know, I, I did have to raise the prices a little at the beginning of the year, uh -huh. just because everything, I mean, everything. You know, everything, it's like the topic du jour, right? I mean, my cases went up $25, the Honduran mahogany went up. 20 the carbon fiber for my necks went up six the cardboard boxes went up four it's just it's just just it's just the litany of, yeah. of things that are more expensive now than they were two years ago you build guitars for a living uh what have you built for yourself all of the prototypes all the prototypes all of them were designed because i wanted them i yeah. thought they were cool yeah what do you, so what, what do you reach for the most often um that's a good question. Uh, it, it probably varies, but in the end, I always come back to just the basic Mendocino natural finish with gold foils. Yeah. Like that's, that's just it for me. I love that thing. And I yeah. make them in all kinds of variations, but that's sort of the core, of the, the, I don't know, the, the epitome or the evolution of all the other things I had done came together in the Mendocino. The other thing that I think is really great about uh, your guitars, I ordered a Mendocino and you called me up and you said, what uh, gauge string joy strings would you like? And I went, perfect. Now I don't have to pull off a set of slinkies and put on string joys right away. <laughs> so you used yeah, every guitar or most guitars ship out of your shop uh, with string joy strings on them. Yeah, unless a customer specifically says I want, and, and some do have very specific requirements. I want exactly this pack of strings. Uh -huh. You know, I go buy one pack of strings just for that guitar and put it on for them. No yep. big deal. But otherwise, I've got, you know, just stacks of, of uh, basically mostly 10s and 11s. Yep. In both Signature and uh, Broadways, depending on the model, uh, which depending on what I think sounds best on that model. Like the Mendocino Juniors, they go out with 10 gauge uh, Broadways, right? The Pure Nickel. Mm hmm. And the regular Mendocino goes out with 11 gauge signatures, just nickel wound, not pure. Those are the ones that I think sound best on those instruments. And if somebody wants to change it, you know, that's a pretty small investment. They can do that later. But more often than not, what happens is somebody emails me and says, hey, what strings were on there? I want to make note of that, right? So when it comes time to change the strings, they kind of dig what's on there and they want to stay Yeah, with it. cool. I've said it numerous times on on demos in the dark, and I'll I'll say it again here. But um, you know, I th I think that you are making really really incredible guitars. Um, I think that um, your ears and your craftsmanship and all of that just kind of all makes its way into these things. And if there are people out there who have not had an opportunity to really look into Grez, um, I would would highly recommend it. And other than that, man, thank you so much for your time on this. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and giving us a tour of the shop and all that. Like that, that was so cool. Yeah, and you know, thank thank you to you and to String Joy for making all yeah, this happen. Yeah, absolutely. Know, I, I appreciate it as well. And you know, uh, I'll see you around the digital universe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, I'll probably be texting you sometime in the next couple of days. Okay.